Join the Thinking in English Conversation Club right now. For just $2 a week, you can join with other English learners, practice speaking, have conversations, enjoy yourself, and use new vocabulary. We run conversation clubs every Tuesday and Thursday at 12 pm, 6 pm, and 9 pm UK time. So there's no excuse. You can join and you should join right now. Join the Thinking in English Conversation Club. Link in the description. Hello, my name is Tom Wilkinson and welcome to the Thinking in English podcast, a podcast for intermediate to advanced level English learners. What is quiet quitting? How about productivity paranoia or career cushioning? Today, I want to talk about some essential vocabulary terms from 2022 that describe the way we work and our workplaces. You can find a full transcript of this episode for free over on the Thinking in English blog. The link is in the description. Also check out my Instagram page and YouTube channel, both called Thinking in English Podcast. Leave me a like, rating or review wherever you are listening right now and join my conversation club over on Patreon. Here is today's episode. I'm self-employed right now. I work for myself. Thinking in English, the conversation club and Patreon, occasional proofreading and a little bit of online teaching are currently my jobs. This was a big change in my life at the end of 2022. The way that I work and organise my time is now completely different. I no longer have a boss, or in my case a supervising professor at a university, to tell me what to do and advise me that I'm making mistakes. For me, I experienced major changes in the way I work in 2022, and I know I am not alone. Across the world, and in a variety of different industries, work and workplace activity has changed. The location where people work, the flexibility of work hours, and the commitment people have to work are among the things that have started to shift. One key theme that had developed over the past few years is a growing divide or conflict between employers and employees over work expectations. After years of letting employees work flexibly at home or remotely, 2022 saw companies try to persuade their employees to return to their offices. There is a tension between workers who want hybrid work arrangements with more flexible hours and employers who want a return to the traditional office-based work schedule. There were record numbers of people quitting jobs last year and increasing cases of work-related burnout and stress. We are witnessing changes in workplace culture as they happen. And one of the best ways to understand these changes are through new or newly popular vocabulary that developed last year in 2022. I found these words in articles across the internet, including in articles by the Washington Post and The Economist magazine. So I'll link the articles to The Washington Post and The Economist magazine in the blog Uh, But both of those articles are behind a paywall, so you'd need to pay to read them. But what I want to do is give a more thorough explanation of the vocabulary, the meanings and the usage to help you all improve your English and describe work better in your own words. And if you enjoy this episode, I have a few very similar episodes available for my Patreon supporters so I'll link to those in the blog as well. But let's start with some vocabulary from the changing workplace. Quiet quitting. One of the most high-profile workplace trends and new vocabulary in 2022 was quiet quitting. 
there were articles all across the internet and media about quiet quitting. TikTok was full of videos discussing the trend, and Collins English Dictionary even included quiet quitting as one of its 2022 words of the year. In the words of Collins Dictionary, quiet quitting is the practice of doing no more work than one is contractually obliged to do. Another definition I found online defined quiet quitting as doing the minimum requirements of one's job and putting no more time, effort or enthusiasm than absolutely necessary. One of the strange things about quiet quitting is that it doesn't actually involve quitting your job. This is what we call a misnomer in English. Quiet quitters continue to work and collect their salary, but the way they work has changed. In a Harvard Business Review article a few months ago, two professors from the USA tried to explain the idea of quiet quitting. They wrote that quiet quitters continue to work and do their primary or basic job responsibilities, the work that they were hired to do in their contract. However, a quiet quitter is unwilling to do activities called citizenship behaviours. Now, what is a citizenship behaviour? Turning up to work early or staying at work late. Attending a meeting that is not in work hours. Volunteering to do extra projects or to take on extra responsibilities. All of these are examples of citizenship behaviour. They are not part of the job description, but many companies expect their employees to be loyal, dedicated and work harder than the advertised job. In some countries, including Portugal and France, there are now strong laws protecting the rights of workers. It is sometimes known as the right to disconnect. If your boss asks you to stay late or sends you emails after work hours, you shouldn't have to do that work or reply to those emails until the next day. But in other countries, like the USA and Japan, work culture is not as protected. Your company may expect you to work incredibly long hours and do extra work even if you are not being paid. And this is why quiet quitting has become such a big topic. It is related to making a good work-life balance and ensuring that your job is not your whole life. Productivity paranoia Since the start of the pandemic in 2020, millions of people around the world started to work from home. And for workers, this often has a lot of advantages. No commute, less stressful work environment, and less distractions from work colleagues. A lot of employees also say they feel more productive. According to some data I found in The Economist magazine, 87% of remote workers, so people who work from home, believe they were just as efficient or even more efficient at home. So workers believe that they can be very productive at home. What about bosses? Well, that same data suggested that only 12% of bosses had full confidence in their team or employees when they were not in the office. This is one of the key factors behind productivity paranoia. As our global economy weakens and recessions look likely, companies are becoming increasingly focused on productivity. Paranoia as defined by the Oxford Dictionary, is the unjustified suspicion or mistrust of other people and their actions. Productivity paranoia is therefore a suspicion or worry about being productive. There are two sides to productivity paranoia. A worker can be paranoid. They are scared of being seen as unproductive, inefficient or lazy and bosses can be paranoid. They are scared that their workers are not working hard enough or being productive enough out of the office. And there is a reason for this. 
while productivity hit record levels in 2020 and early 2021, 2022 saw some of the lowest levels of economic productivity in history. With more people working from home, this made it more difficult for managers and bosses to check on their employees' progress. They can't physically or visibly walk and look at some work. And this has led to bosses feeling anxious that their team is not doing enough at home. Productivity paranoia can lead to a number of bad practices from bosses. Putting surveillance or tracking technology on computers and laptops is one example. Another example would be forcing employees back into their offices. RTO RTO, or Return to Office, was chosen by Glassdoor, a company that allows you to review jobs and workplaces, as its word of the year for 2022. And there was a good reason for this. Fears of the pandemic and coronavirus forced companies to shut their offices and send employees home for months, even years. In 2022, companies started to recall those employees back into the cities and into their offices, either full-time or in hybrid arrangements. Elon Musk gave his employees an ultimatum, return to the office or lose your job. Other large corporations, banks and companies similarly pushed their workforces to return. Employees, however, are not always happy with RTO. People have got used to working from home, have moved further away from the city centres and enjoy avoiding busy commutes. Employees seem to enjoy flexibility and fear a return to the office may cost them their flexibility. TWT City I actually talked about TWT or TWAT cities in a recent bonus episode. You can find more vocab by listening to that episode. I'll put a link in the blog. After the pandemic, there were suggestions that workers would never return to the office. But this was not the case. While workers have returned to offices across the world, they are not necessarily returning as before. A new pattern has developed. Work at home on Mondays and Fridays and go to the city Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday. Hence the term twat city. Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday city. It is also a curse word in British English, so don't call someone that word. This trend of working part at home and part in the office is going to force cities to change and adapt. Restaurants, cafes and bars in city centres will need to change staff and opening hours. And office buildings will also need to think of ways to deal with less usage. It is expensive to pay rent on a large office, if people are only working there a few days a week, on Tuesdays, Wednesdays and Thursdays. Boomerang Employees On November 17th, 2021, I released an episode on the Great Resignation. This is before thinking in English was popular, so don't worry if you never listened to that episode. In a nutshell, the Great Resignation referred to record numbers of people resigning or quitting their jobs in search for something new or better. Apparently around 48 million people in the USA quit a job in 2021. In the year after the Great Resignation, a related phenomenon occurred. Boomerang employees. A boomerang is a curved piece of wood that returns to the thrower when thrown, and was traditionally used by Australian Aboriginal peoples. A boomerang employee is an employee who returns to their original workplace after quitting. In the past, companies have been reluctant to hire past employees. They didn't want to reward people for quitting the office. However, in a difficult labour market, boomerang employees can be quite useful. They already know the work culture and they need less training than completely new hires. 
People may quit their job in search of better opportunities, but sometimes the best opportunity is actually with the company they quit. And this is the reason for Boomerang employees. Career cushioning. The final workplace word from 2022 I want to talk about is career cushioning. In the simplest terms, career cushioning could be defined as having a plan B, a backup plan for if your career goes wrong. As we approach recessions and financial difficulties over the next few months, companies are likely to struggle and need to lay off or fire employees. Career cushioning is a term used to describe preparing for an alternative job if you don't like your current one or if you fear layoffs. Maybe you learn new skills, like taking language classes or computer coding courses to make yourself more employable in the future. Maybe you search for new jobs and apply for openings at more stable companies. Or maybe you start a side hustle, another way of making money separate to your main job. All of these are examples of career cushioning. And career cushioning is incredibly important for a lot of workers today. A friend of mine co-founded a startup company, which became really popular during the pandemic. They gained hundreds of thousands of new customers during the first months of 2020 and hired hundreds of new employees. Now, the company has lost most of those new customers and they have had to lay off many of those employees who thought they had great startup jobs which would last them for many years. And this is not a unique story. It has happened to people all across the world as companies struggle to adjust to the post-COVID world. Career cushioning is about having a backup plan so that if something goes wrong, you have the skills, the plans or the finances to stay successful if you lose your job. So here is today's final thought. From quiet quitting to career cushioning, 2022 saw the emergence of a lot of new workplace vocabulary. Most of this vocabulary was related to the changing way we work as companies struggle to adapt to the impact of remote working and the changing desires of employees. But what do you think? Which of these six words did you find the most relevant to yourself? Have you quiet quit your job? Or are you currently career cushioning? And are there any words that I missed from my list? Let me know by leaving a comment on Spotify, you can comment on the Thinking in English blog on the transcript, um, or you can send me a message on Instagram. Instagram is probably one of the best ways to contact me. I'm much better at replying on Instagram than I am to replying to emails or contact forms on the website. However, the best way to contact me and the best way to guarantee I reply to your messages is if you subscribe to my Patreon. And why should you subscribe to Patreon? Well, we now run six conversation clubs a week on Tuesdays and Thursdays at 12 p.m., 6 p.m. and 9 p.m. We have conversation clubs. You can join English learners from around the world, from Japan and Taiwan and China to Indonesia and Thailand, India, Kazakhstan, uh, most of Europe from Poland to Spain and even people living in England, through to South America, Colombia, Brazil, Mexico, uh, people in the USA and Canada. We have Thinking in English listeners from all around the world joining together to practice their English. So that's why you should join Patreon. We also have English classes, uh, intermediate, upper intermediate and advanced level. We have bonus episodes. I mentioned a few in today's episode, uh, but I've got lots of bonus episodes you can listen to um, and probably a lot more benefits in the future. And maybe the most important benefit is that you'll be supporting me and helping me to continue making thinking in English into the future. 
because as I mentioned right at the beginning of today's episode, this is now my job. I have gone through a big workplace change and thinking in English is my career. Right now, I'm not earning enough money really to live, so a few more Patreon subscribers would really, really help me out. So please consider supporting on Patreon, but if you can't, if you don't have the money, don't worry, just keep listening and leave me a five-star review on Spotify. That might be the best thing you can do. Or an Apple review, if you listen on Apple, of course. Um, But yeah, just review the podcast. But thank you for listening to today, and I will see you all next time. Goodbye.